Hey guys, thank you for stopping by. I am here with my weekly stitching update. I have six whips to share with you. Plus I started figuring out how to measure my progress on my paper charts. She'll be showing you a little bit more of how I'm choosing to track my stitching. And I'm gonna start first with the whip I didn't even anticipate messing with, which is Modern Folk Embroidery's 2020 Stitch Along, a family patchwork sampler, still working in January. Here's where it was last time. And this is what I have for today. As you can see, I've really started taking the, I call them, I don't want to say, they're not even full motifs here, but I'm starting to work my way down the chart because I'm really looking to get down here to April so that I can start moving across to May. I'd really like to catch up with the actual month that the pattern is for, to, since it is a monthly stitch along. I also did, kind of work out that each one of these pages is roughly 80 some by 90 some stitches and a lot there's a lot of white space particularly in this one since I'm, this is the 2020 and so i'm actually thinking i'm not again not going to finish this this year but i am going to try to catch up so i'm at least working in the month corresponding to the cell and that this one should take me only a year so the idea is that this would be done by worst case April of next year but I am really enjoying this the vertical is I didn't know how I was going to feel about it um the one thing I noticed is that it has a tendency to pick up some really weird wrinkles but it feels really nice under the hand and I don't find this one particularly hard to stitch on insofar as the 40 count at the moment I'm actually worse with my glasses than I am with my contacts which I would have never guessed. There you go. My next piece is also from Modern Folk Embroidery and it is Ave Maria, the Annunciation. I had started this one back in March and my goal, I'm gonna reiterate the goal, my goal was to get it done by Christmas. And that means I do need to make a point of picking it up more often than I have been. So here's where it was last time. And here's where I am today. You'll see that most of the stitching was done through the torso, the, I'm trying to think how to describe this. There is definitely more of a sense of the robes he's wearing. This is the edge of a wing up here. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. So what I've decided for this piece, I'm gonna keep working on both finishing Gabriel, but I also really planning on coming up to the border because I'm not going to get over to Mary until I start filling in the border just based on minimizing my counting so that I don't make any mistakes but I am still loving the color this is on a 36 count two over two so a little bit fuller coverage compared to my um my other projects on 36 or one over one as well as the 40 counts or one over one so this is just it's kind of neat seeing how much I don't want to say it's not bulky but a little bit beefier of a fill which I really appreciate because I did not want the white poking through this color blue the next piece that I messed with this week is heartstring samplery summertime coverlet and I was not originally intending on picking this up it just happened to be it was there and I needed something for sitting in the car at church, except for I discovered CCDs over for the year. So no more, I'm at, actually most of my travel stitching opportunities are disappearing. That's okay. Here's where it was last time. And this is where we're at today. I finished this one. So we're upper right corner is complete. This also leaves me with 10 of the 16 flowers that make the top of the pattern done starting to work in here so my plan is just to fill in this upper quadrant before filling this one and then finally get to go down to all the fun stuff um in hindsight i don't know if i should have picked doing all the flowers on the front side but i am i have bought so many skeins of uniform blue and they're not particularly from dye lot, dye lots, I mean they're hand dyed, but they don't necessarily match all that well, so I got enough to fill in this entire upper area with a grayer one. The stuff at the bottom is gonna end up being a, stuff at the bottom. It's gonna end up being a little more blue, so we'll see how it works. Uh, the other thing I hope, hope, actually I don't hope you can see, but you probably can. Um, 
the blue that his from whenever it got liquid on here, the blue that has come out of some of the floss onto staining this very, very lovely fabric that I'm hoping will come out later. Really, really hoping. I mean, up here you can tell this was stitched later because you don't see the blue. So maybe this is the don't leave things hanging around forever. Don't let them be where you can spill water on them. I mean, lots of things like that. So. That's where I am with this one. I have found that the sweet spot is doing about two, I write my, my flosses in 36 inch lengths, doing two lengths of this and calling it good and putting it down. This one, I don't have a desired end date on it's so I'm gonna let this kind of be my, call it my slow burn project. Next up, I worked on Ink Circles Tapestry and I have mentioned that this one is one that I love the design. I just don't know that I love stitching on it. I wish I could say things were much different this week, but they're not. Anyway, here's where it was last time. And this is where we're at today. You see that really the only changes are I put in this bird, this one, and added this golden, I don't, even though I don't know what it's supposed to be called, but whatever goes between these birds. So it's a little more fleshed out. I am, before I move on from this quadrant, I'm gonna fill in, there's another flower that kind of is right here and right here. So to kind of have a more complete look around. I love the colors on this. I really love the effect where it's completed. So I wish I could say that I were absolutely enamored on stitching on it. It's still a little bit of a slog and I haven't figured out why. I, I'm i a person, I like to know all the answers. So having this like question that I'm asking myself, like why don't I love stitching on this more? I don't know, it's just, it's very interesting because with our hobby, it's not just you have a product at the end, but you also have the process. I love the product. Finding the process a little less enjoyable. It's the exact, I'm making X's with threads. I make it on every single one of these. So I don't understand why this one, I don't know if it's a combination of the count of fabric. This is a 30 count. It's the only thing I have on 30 count. I tend to prefer 32 to 36 as my sweet spots. So I don't, I don't know, but here's the thing. Like I said, what I've done is fantastic. So I am happy that I pulled it out because the colors are a lot of fun. Even, yes, even these kind of boring like rounds, but I just love how it means that the various pinks and the fun greens pop. Now I've mentioned my plans with my Mirabilia is to have a focus piece and then one that is rotating weekly. And the one for this week is Winter Queen. I haven't touched her in several weeks. And so I really thought I was gonna make more progress. And I did. But I didn't at the same time. My intent was to get roughly 500 stitches. I didn't get there, I got about 250. It's okay. Here's where she was last time. And this is where she is today. As you'll see, the major thing is I started putting her hands in. Um, so this is her right hand, this is her left hand, and because it's not back stitched, it's really hard to tell. And this area up here is actually her shoulder and the um, beginning of her, I have gotten to, the base of her neck is right there. So it's funny, while sitting here, I can see it because I also know what the chart looks like. Everyone else, I'm like, do you see hands? And they're like, no, nobody in my household sees the hands except for me. One of the things that I really appreciate about Nora Corbett's work is in this case, I'm only using three colors to create her hands, but you can see even without the back stitching, because in this case, the back stitching only shows like one finger and just the curve of her hand, but that because what's going on here with the light, lightest color, you can see that her knuckles would be here. So this is the back of her hand. These are her fingers. And I just love how even in such a small space, she's able to convey that. And I don't, it's, I guess one of the best parts about her designs is I really feel like they come closest to the idea of painting with the fibers and so, hence why I do so many of these. I really, I mean, clearly Mirabilia's are my favorite designs. And I'm gonna actually have to show you my collection at some point in the future. 
I mean, it's not huge, but, and I only collect the fancy ladies. I don't do mermaids, I don't do angels, fairies, none of that, literally, fancy ladies. So this is, well, let's say roughly 250 stitches, because I also filled in some more with the on this cloak. But it's not as much as I anticipated doing this week, but I'm happy with what I did. And if I get moved to add her is like a, you know, come back in before I see her in four weeks, Great, if not, well, in four weeks, we'll be doing more work on her. Now that brings me to my focus Marybelia piece right now, which is Autumn Queen. And I am very excited to show you the progress that I have made in the last week. Here's where she is last time. And this is where we are at for today, is you can see, we have started putting in the Krynik. It's really exciting for me. Um, just because, well, it's neat where you can see what the shapes are supposed to be. As you can see, I haven't come up here yet. I just was, I didn't know what it was gonna look like until I pulled the uh, Krynik out and see that it's these really neat coppery tones. And I did the lighter one first and I was like, okay, that looks nice. It was that deeper one. It's a very reddish copper and it just, I love it. I love it this so much and which is funny because if you'd asked me even when I bought these this was not my favorite of the four seasonal queens but she has just been a blast to stitch we'll say that I don't I started putting in some more whisper right here I don't try to go overboard with the whisper because I do find it a little frustrating to stitch with not because I have any like particular issues I just it's weird <laughs> and fuzzy and it just i can handle about three lengths of it before i'm like okay i'm done i'm gonna go do the dmc i'd also forgotten how much uh the sound of krynik going through the hole in the linen where it's buddy actually where it's you can hear it on the linen but you can also hear it on where it's interacting with the dmc and it just makes i it's a good thing that it looks so awesome because <laughs> the sound gets me so, so badly, but whatever. Look how pretty she is. I am so, so in love with this. Um, I thought I was gonna finish off down here. I did it, but as you can see, this entire, this is like, her cloak is looking awesome. I love this. I know I say this about like a lot of my projects. Well, no, it's actually not fair. I, I love stitching on this one. I love looking at everything about this. It's just love. Oh, it's the best project. I have such a blast. I told you that I wanted to work on planning. And the problem with planning right now is I don't know how much I stitch in a week. And I still didn't get a precise stitch count this week because I did not get all of my projects inputted into my paper journal. So I have this, it's a it's supposed to be for a bullet journal, so it had, it's the uh, dot grid style pages. And in this case, what I have done, hopefully you can see that, I've, and I did only some of the projects for this week. So Ave Maria got put in here, Autumn Queen got put in here, um, the 2020, sell from autumn photo embroidery and it's actually it's so big that i had to put it on this way and it only just fits so i'm using each one of these dots to create to it represents 100 so these all these squares are 100 stitches and in the case of autumn queen here what i did is went ahead and pulled out the chart and all the x's are spaces that have no stitching no beads nothing they're empty squares in the grid so in total i and then the the then the remaining squares, I came up with a rough stitch count of 33,100. Now the reality is that's probably overstating by a good one to 2,000 because this includes all your edge stitches. Like one of them that I filled in was literally three X's and it counts as a hundred. So I know that that's not reality. But anyway, so as I fill everything in, I am just kind of doing the, um, shade it and then I'm keeping literally a tally at the bottom. So I started off the beginning of the week with 74 of these in a totally completed state 
and by the end of my stitching on this one on Saturday, I was up to 91 pieces. And so in total, there is 331 of these squares to fill in. So 91 of them are done. Now again, is there more? Sure, so I didn't do the equivalent of 1,500 stitches on this project. Most of this was primarily done, but I probably got 700. And I, kind of, I am finding this one is a nice representation. It's also telling me like, please go ahead and fill in the whisper. I won't <laughs> regret it. It's nice being able to, because a lot of these are like half filled and the other half is whisper. So to be able, because I know that the bulk of this project is really already stitched on the lower half. So I did that. Um, Ave Maria, a little less so, but I am at five, at least 500 stitches are done. And that's the other thing is I know that this is a lower bound of at least blank are done, particularly like in the case of this, most it, the squares I'm using, the grid is mostly full. So what I've done on um, the 2020 Modern Folk Embroidery style, this actually represents the January page and I haven't filled in the rest of them just because I didn't want to pull out the ruler and the pen but I have been marking off where things so there's like one grid here that had nothing in it everything else has some stitches in it of some variety and it as I get them completed I get to make them and then I'm what I'm actually doing is because this chart takes up the entire page or this the entire piece takes up this entire page and then I'm keeping track over here with actual stitch count so and I'm doing it with pencil just because it's easier because it, how I'm filling it in but I'm making a point of putting down dates so that's I'm finding it helpful and like I said I got roughly 2,000 stitches put in this week I am hoping that I'm gonna keep track of that for a month see what I'm actually like how I'm tracking because I'll have some weeks that like in this case I felt like I got I touched more projects than I intended but I got less on each individual project and that's okay um but I am almost happy that by touching more I felt like it was the more rapid rotation kept me engaged in a way that trying to make you know three or four days my because when I started the week I thought I was going to spend three or four days on Autumn Queen and it ended up really being two because I almost burnt out so I'm just trying to find that sweet spot of what works for me. I'm hoping to figure out just over, I'm gonna use a month because I figure a month should give me a rough idea of approximately how much I'm actually gonna get done in any like week that the number should be more realistic than what if this was a really great stitching week for me. Maybe it was a really bad stitching week and I didn't even know. So I am gonna try to, I don't wanna say experiment with the number of projects I touched. I thought that four would be the answer this week. I obviously ended up touching six and it, from a feeling standpoint, felt better. So I'm gonna kinda of go with my feelings on number of projects. I do know that I will be working on Autumn Queen and I will be working on Stargazer this week. I haven't, I'm gonna allow my other projects to be a what moves me at the moment that I feel like stitching on them. And what happens, happens. I hope that you guys have had a great week with any of the crafting that you are doing. I will see you next time. And thank you so much for stopping by.